Marty Moran for television damage caused during an argument. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Case 2144, Paramount versus Morgan. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Paramount, you and the defendant had been friends. Yes. And according to what I read, there was a falling out, which you will tell me about briefly. Subsequently, and without too much time having passed, you decided to conduct an intervention, a drug intervention, with the defendant. Yes. And it is your claim that during that drug intervention, she damaged your television set, and you want her to pay for a new TV. That's what your case yes. is about. The defendant has a cross complaint. She says she's missing some sort of a speaker. I don't know what that is. And for the emotional distress that she suffered as a result of this intervention. So I have a couple of questions, just preliminarily. How long have you known each other? Over 20 years. Friends? Yes, best friends, oh. former best friends. Former now. best friends. But there came a time, according to your complaint, that there was a falling out. And when was that? That was in May of this year. And what was the falling out about? It was about our mutual friend and... This gentleman? Yes. What about your mutual friend? He was in the hospital and we were all taking care of him. And she felt adamant to tell me that I need to do certain things for him. And I was letting her know that if he needs to tell me he needs my help, he can tell me. Okay, there were several people looking after him while he was in the hospital, taking turns, is that right? Yes. And she was telling you things that you should be doing for him, and you said to her, if he wants me to do something, let him tell me you don't direct me. Correct. Okay, tell me the next thing that happened that brings us to court today. Well, after that in May, I blocked her. We didn't speak. Did you go to visit him? Oh, yes. That's... Oh, yes. And did you? Yes. So you both did. Okay, so you blocked her in May. Then what's the next thing that happened? Now we're in September, and this was... And between May and September, you haven't seen her? Haven't seen her. Okay. And now it's September. It's Labor Day weekend, and our friend Brandon wanted to mend our friendship back together. And it kind of did, because we've been friends for so long. We talked and kind of mend it. Okay. Okay, so I unblocked her. And then on that Sunday, September 4th, she calls me at seven o'clock in the morning and I guess she still felt uneasy about, you know, us not talking for so long that she demanded an apology from me. She called you early in the morning demanding an apology for what? For basically just, I was in the wrong of not listening to her about our friend. Okay, and then what happened? So I refused to give her an apology. I said, we can move past it, but I'm not apologizing, which she got upset again and hung up the phone on me. And after that, she basically called a family member of mine. Not basically. Sorry. You say that she placed a call to a family member. Yes. Okay, and you can't tell me what that family member told you because that's hearsay. You Correct. understand that. Okay, so she called a family member and that was on September 4th. Yes. Okay, and a family member called you. The family member actually... Did what? Actually lives with me, so they okay. didn't call me. Okay, well, you can tell me the relationship. It's just family. Okay, family member who lives with you, yeah. and? So she was calling that family member, asking for... You can't tell me what any of that okay, was about. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So after the conversation with the family member, the family member told me what she said. I know, I'm not saying the conversation. Absolutely right. So I told Brandon what she said, and we thought at the time, let's have an intervention. Okay, now, so without giving any credibility to any out-of-court statements, I assume by the word intervention, you had a suspicion that the defendant was using drugs or alcohol. Yes. Before that, before September 4th, did you have any knowledge of ongoing substance abuse with your best friend? Yes. Since when? For a very long time. Okay. Did you ever discuss the drug use with her? Yes. Well, you can tell me what those discussions were like. What kind of drugs were you afraid she was using? I prefer not to say. 
Well, you can't not say that's what this is all about. You wanted to have an intervention. You didn't want to have an intervention because she was having caramel-covered popcorn. There was a controlled substance, I assume, that you were afraid she was using. Yes. Which was what? Cocaine. Have you ever seen her using cocaine? Yes. Did you ever use cocaine with her? Yes. Between May and September, had you ever used cocaine with her? No. So it was before that? Yes. His name is Brandon? Yes. Had Brandon ever used cocaine with the two of you? No. Did you ever see Brandon use cocaine? No. Okay. So you, who had used cocaine with her, decided to have an intervention with Brandon? Yes. What do you do for a living? I'm an inbound call agent. I sell tickets. Okay. And what does Brandon do? He's disabled. And who was going to be at this intervention? It was myself. Brandon and another mutual friend. Mutual friend. Now, this mutual friend, whose name I will not have you state, have you ever seen that mutual friend use any sort of controlled substance? Answer the question. Yes. Have, yes. So now you have two people who've used controlled substance, one who has not, to your knowledge, doing an intervention. Correct. Okay. And do you know what an intervention is? Yes. What is it? It's a, basically a meeting of the minds of having a, a discussion with one person mm -hmm. about a, an issue that... And who's there? Who's there? Yeah. Oh, I would say trusted people, that I would feel that they, okay. they were... Sarah, I want you to look up the word intervention and read me the very, very simplistic definition of an intervention. From the Mayo Clinic, an intervention is a carefully planned process that may be done by family and friends in consultation with a doctor or professional, such as a licensed alcohol and drug counselor, or directed by an intervention professional called an interventionalist. Okay. So what you don't have is something, I, I assume, this conversation occurred on September 4th. Correct. Was it on that same day that you decided to have an intervention? Yes. Okay. So let's start with the word well-planned not as a result of a conversation that you have with somebody. And it's a well-planned event done in conjunction with very often relatives or close family who have a concern that something is out of control, some abusive behavior that's related to either alcohol or other controlled substances in conjunction with a licensed professional where everything is... Everything is synchronized but managed by a professional. Do you understand? Yes. This was a bad plan. If there was no plan. It was a plan made because you were annoyed. Usually people who are involved in thinking about an intervention have nothing but love in their heart for the person who needs that intervention, but they have a plan. You didn't have a plan. Yes, you I You kidnapped her into your house. Jennifer Paramon claims her former friend, Cardi Moran, broke her television. Cardi is countersuing for emotional distress. Now, you were annoyed at the conversation, so what you did was not really an intervention. What did you think was going to happen at the end of this intervention? What was supposed to happen to her? According to what I read, you called her, or someone called her, probably your family member called her with regard to these drugs that she wanted to purchase. Is that what happened? Yes. And said, I have them come to the house. Yes. Okay. So that's not a giant leap. You have to put that together. So she calls your family member for some cocaine. You arrange for an intervention. Your family member calls her at your request and says, come to the house. So that's what happened. Yes. Okay, but she was lured to your apartment. Yes, yes, I was. Yes. By whom? By us. By her. I didn't mean by us. They my, all said myself. Ship up. Myself, Brandon, and another. Well, who friend. called her and said, "Come over"? Who called her? She, yes. She, we we were already going out. She was already going just, out with Brandon. Just a second. She and, was already going out with Brandon. Yes, and she decided to come to where I live to come pick up these drugs. Because when she found out that basically the setup was for her to get her to my house so 
I told my family member to tell her that we did have it. Oh, just a second. That's what I said. So she was lured yes. to your house. Yes. Where you were going to do what with her? What happened when you got to your house? Basically, just talk. Not basically. Sorry. Not basically. You lure somebody to the house. She's come to the house now expecting, let us say, expecting to buy drugs or get drugs. She gets there and realizes that that's not going to happen, that there are other people, that that's not going to happen. So tell me what happened when she walked in the house. That's what your case is. Well, when she walked in the house, um, I immediately tried to give her a hug, and she was upset. Now, you immediately tried to give her a hug. What did you say? I, I, I didn't say anything. I just opened arms, and she said, no, it's fake, backing away. It's fake? What's yes. fake? My hug. OK, so she backed away. Yes. And? And it just started off No, with no, a... no. Somebody had to say something to her. Somebody had to say, this is an intervention. Somebody had to say why she was there. She eventually was going to say, where are the drugs? <laughs> but you have to tell me what happened. Yes, when she walked in. She walked in, house... you went to give her a hug, pushed you away. Then what? Come on, this was an intervention. Yes. So we, I, we couldn't even get to the part of this is an intervention. How could you get to an intervention? You because don't know she... what an intervention is. <laughs> well, we couldn't get to a part of let's talk. She immediately said she was being set up, this is a setup, with arguments back and forth. Well, what were the arguments back and forth? The back, back and forth arguments. She said, I'm being set up. Somebody said to her, this is an intervention. She, we didn't get to that part. Well, what is the setup that she was talking about? I don't know why she well, said... Well, it was a setup. It was, it a, was setup. a setup. It was a setup. Yeah, so I want to know what your end game was. The end game was to have a conversation with her so we can resolve our issues of why does she need an apology from me? We have been friends for so long. Her getting to, to my house, yes, we did lie and say, yes, there was drugs at my house, but she already knew from how we're all there, that there was no drugs. She was upset. She was irate. She was bringing up the argument that we had earlier so in the morning. So this wasn't an intervention for drugs or alcohol? It was an intervention for drugs and alcohol. Oh, okay. Then I'm asking you, not what happened, what was your end game? The end game was to have a conversation with her about how much drug she was doing because it changed her mood. It made her angry. Well, it made did you her... have a program for her to go to? Did you have a program to take her to? Had you spoken to a professional? Had you done anything? No. Okay. And when she was there, according to you, she was in your house with three other people? Myself and Brandon and another mutual friend. So with three other people, yes. so she was there with three other adults. Yes. And she was lured there under false pretenses. Yes. And what she did, according to you, was pick up a chair and throw it at you or threw it at a television set, breaking the television set. She didn't throw it at me. What did she do? She threw it directly at my television. Lucky she didn't throw it at you? I wish she would have. That's, That's exactly you know, what she did. Just a second. You're lucky. You can't do what you did. That's almost like kidnapping. If you're having a serious intervention, you have to sit down, have a working plan, what happened. Have the right in your heart, have the right messaging. Your messaging was all wrong. Usually people who are involved in thinking about an intervention have nothing but love in their heart for the person who needs that intervention, and they seek professional help in order to get that person professional help. But they have a plan. You didn't have a plan. Yes, You I have, kidnapped her I admit, into your it was, house. It was you a bad. You can't do that. It was bad. It was it bad. It was very bad. Yeah. So you fix your own television set. Your case is dismissed. But, Your Honor, I have it all on video. Did she break your TV? Yes. I'm, I'm going to look at the video. Your case is still going to be dismissed. I believe she broke your TV. Show me the video. I believe it. And I also have I believe the that she. I believe that you're lucky that's all she did in order to get out of your apartment. Did she ultimately leave your apartment? Forcefully, yes. I kicked her out. <laughs> so f forcefully, and... you tricked her into coming in, and then you kicked her out? Yes, after breaking okay. my, my property. OK. No. Damn, why would you, like, I squirt the f dog? I cannot. I said not to <laughs> Why am I being recorded? Just a second.
Just, I don't know why you're being recorded in any event. Yet, as I said, your case is dismissed. Fix your own TV. You have a counterclaim. Yes. And your counterclaim, I don't know what this speaker is. What is a speaker? A speaker, um, you connect your phone to Bluetooth and you hear music on it. Okay, so what was it doing at her it house? Was never... Shh. We were supposed to be hanging out. So, um, with Brand... I was supposed to be hanging out with Brandon and another mutual friend. I didn't know we were gonna stay at Jennifer's house. Okay, I just wanna know what, you brought the speaker? Yeah, a speaker. And you left it there? I didn't leave it there, my things were scattered. When she was kicking me out, my things were scattered, getting kicked into the hallway. When amateurs decide to do an intervention, any negative consequence that flows from that, you just have to accept. But that's reason for her to break my stuff? Absolutely, it would have been reason to her to break everything in your apartment to get out. Jennifer Paramon has accused her former friend, Cardi Moran, of breaking her television. Cardi claims Jennifer caused emotional distress after being tricked by Jennifer. Okay, did you look for the speaker? Yeah, I looked everywhere did, in the hallway. Do you have her speaker? There was never a speaker. Did you see a speaker? No, I didn't. Okay, there's no speaker. Now let's talk about your emotional situation. You got to this, I can't even call it intervention. Trap. Trap, that's yeah. a good word. There you go. That's a good word, thank you. Mm -hmm. And tell me what happened when you got there. When I got there, I asked a family member, her family member, to come downstairs. Okay. Miss Moran, you walk in the door. Yes. And there's no question that, that you were tricked and that this was a trap. Yes. That's what it was. I realized that maybe one minute. Okay. That's what it was. Got in there and it was an uneasy feeling. You realized that it was a trick to get you there. It was a trap. I want you to tell me what happened when you got inside. Jennifer starts to walk up to me like with her arms open, real slow motion, like, Cardi, I'm sorry. You know, we should talk about this. We're friends. In that same tone. And I'm like, yo, really? This, you're, you're being fake. I don't really want this. You know, I came here to get what I wanted and let's go. But Brandon is getting all comfortable. He is disabled, so, you know, all right, fine. He's, he's got to get comfortable. So <sighs> we start arguing, me and Jennifer, we start arguing. About what? About the conversation that me and her had earlier. You know, she said that I should just get over what she, what, what she said initially for me getting upset. Okay, so the initial conversation didn't have anything to do with drugs? We never talked about drugs. When I, when I got to the house, we never, it, me, I never had anything to do with them. I was talking to the family member, what I came to get. Then once me and her start arguing, I tell Brandon, like, all right, can we go now? Like, are, are we done here? Like, let's leave, I okay. want to go. So what happened when you said to Brandon, Let's go, I wanna get out of here. What happened? She squirts me with a water gun. She tells me, oh, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna squirt you like I squirt the dogs. Brandon, stand up. Your last name is? Milner. I want you to describe this water gun. To be honest, Judge, I don't remember seeing a water gun. It's in the video. If you listen to the video, <laughs> she says it. I'm gonna squirt you Brandon, like I squirt the dogs. Brandon, before I look at this again, you were there in the room. Yes. I'm gonna give you one before I look at the video again. Whether you saw her squirt the water gun or not, did you see a water gun that day? No, I didn't. No, okay. So let's play this and let me hear what you're referring to. Yeah, why are you like I squirt the dog? I cannot. Mean, I, like I said not to. <laughs> are you serious? Okay, Sarah, you have a much more keen sense said, of hearing than I do. I'm going to squirt you like I squirt that dog. Okay. She's got younger ears than I do. What? I never squirted her with the squirt. With the whether, whether you did or not, are you telling me that, no, I that said Sarah it. heard? Okay, so it. you did squirt. But you I didn't, didn't say it. Her. I'm going to squirt you like I squirt the dog. Yeah. Okay, but that's not an intervention. It, we mean, were arguing know. at that point. It was already it past was, the that's because conversation, you that. intervention. That's because you did the wrong thing. Yeah, it was a it was horrible plan. It, w it was horrible. Oh, well, yeah, they're absolutely right. And it caused a great deal of distress. I want to know how you got out of the apartment. I was kicked out. I was pushed out. I was my things were thrown into the hallway. At what point did that happen? After, is that after Literally 3 seconds after After the after the TV was broken. Uh, yes. You were pushed out the door. Yes. 
Well, that's some really good intervention. How long were you in the house? A total six minutes, maybe. Where did you go from there? Um, I got picked up and went home. Got picked up Two by whom? hours later by my sister-in-law. Don't make anything up. No. Who, who picked you up? My sister-in-law. Okay. And my daughter and her boyfriend. In that two-hour period... Yes. You must have waited somewhere for them. Yes, I waited in her hallway. Okay, so you waited. When they came to pick you up, was there any further conversation with no. her or Brandon? They just picked you up. Well, between those two hours, there was conversations between my daughter and Brandon, my daughter and Jennifer. Everyone was talking. Well, to... where was your daughter? She was home. So it was on the phone that they were talking? Yes. And she was pleading with them to give me my stuff back so I could just leave. The cross-complaint, or well, the countersuit, is seeking $1,800. It's seeking $1,800 not only for the emotional distress that was caused to the defendant, but also for a speaker. They don't have a speaker. How much was the speaker so that I can deduct that? It was 129 Okay, so we're really talking about $1,700. Okay, and that's the amount that you want for your emotional distress. Yes, Your Honor. For that six minutes. I don't blame you. I think it's worth at least that. I think that when amateurs decide for all the wrong reasons to do an intervention, any negative consequence that flows from that, you just have to accept. But that caused that, you, that's reason for her to break my stuff? Absolutely. It would have been reason to her to break everything in your apartment to get out. Absolutely. You are holding her there. I you didn't you hold her. yes just a second. You brought her there under false pretenses. That's what you did. And you had somebody else there as well. And according to you, you wrote it was an intervention. But it wasn't an intervention. It was a, whether you wanted to... For a 20-year relationship, I may, an intervention may be a wrong, wrong well, word. Well, it was, a very, it a, was a very, very wrong word. And you don't trick somebody to come to your house with something else in mind, even if it's to buy drugs. So I'm awarding you $1,700 on the counterclaim for your emotional distress. Your claim for the broken TV is dismissed. We're done. This court is adjourned. I have no thoughts. I'm happy with her decision, but it's bittersweet because these are my friends. Just have a conversation about certain situations we were having. Her intention, I don't think it was to make me stop doing what they all do anyway. I didn't keep her, that's the thing. She walked in freely, walked out. That's the betrayal. Yeah, this is over. It's just time to go separate ways. You know, I lived and I learned those are the people that I grew up with. You know, those, those turn up days are over anyway, so. I think this whole situation was a perfect example of what my dad calls lack of two-step thinking. Okay. So we can already agree the intentions were not great. They were just maybe potentially rekindling a friendship and that's not exactly the person you want leading your intervention, if that's what they wanted to call it. And also, what was your plan? If it went the way that the plaintiff at least claims she was intending it was to get her friend help, say that the defendant broke down and cried and admitted to having a problem and really wanting help. Where was the help? There was no help. That's true. So I agreed with you that she, des the plaintiff, deserved any amount of damage that happened from having such a lack of a plan in well, something that... It was, that it was a lack of a plan. She lured her there. Yeah. I mean, Good. just a, a messed up situation all in all. And it, you really have to be coming from the right place to do something like that. And I think neither of them were... Suing her ex-boyfriend, Joshua Caldwell, for the cost of a French bulldog. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2120, Jones versus Cartwell. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Jones, you and the defendant were in a romantic relationship that yes. started about a year ago, more yes. than a year ago. And then you decided to do one of the most foolish things that people do when they sort of fall in love, sometimes temporarily. You decided to buy a dog together. According to you, the relationship went south, and now we have this adorable dog that you want back. You say the dog is really yours. You were the one who was its primary caretaker. You paid for a vet bill. Mr. Caldwell said that's not the case. The dog was always supposed to be his. He purchased it. And it's your argument that if Mr. Caldwell is allowed to keep the dog, that you be reimbursed for the vet bills that you paid. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you and Mr. Caldwell live together? Yes. From when to when? From February 1st of this year to September 3rd. And in what month did you decide to get the dog's name is Scrappy? Yes. Scrappy. We got, Scra we got Scrappy on January 18th. So before you moved in together? Yes. Where were you living? 
I was going back and forth from my mom's house to Joshua's. I already had a key in January. I was staying okay, there. Okay, but you were living day. with your mother. Yes. In January. Yes. And who was the breeder of this dog? Did you buy the dog from the breeder or from? From the breeder, Andrew. Now, Andrew was sitting over there on the defendant's side, so I assume that Andrew was a friend of your boyfriend's. Yes. Stand up, Andrew. I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. That's Scrappy. Yes. Scrappy is about eight months old. Eight. He just hit a year about two, three weeks ago. Oh, so still a puppy. Yes. Looks very healthy. When Scrappy was purchased, was the amount paid for him the same as was paid for the other dogs in Scrappy's litter? No. How many puppies were in the litter? Five. Did you charge Mr. Caldwell or Miss Jones for Scrappy? Mr. Caldwell. How much did you charge him? $3,000, Your Honor. Who paid you? Joshua. Mr. Caldwell, did he pay by check or cash? Cash and Zelle payments. Did you ever see Miss Jones in the purchasing process? Yes, I seen her. Tell me about it. At the time when they came to pick up the dog, she was his girlfriend, but there was no connection with me. And was the that dog. the first time you had met her? I've seen her around because we would work at the gym together. We we're both personal trainers, so I would see her around the gym sometimes. Had you discussed with your friend Joshua? Yes. While you were working with him in your personal training at the gym, had you discussed with him getting a dog? Yes. When? I can't recall the exact date, but I know that he had seen that I had bought my dog and that I was getting into the business. So he contacted me early in, say, 2020, stating that, hey, I want to eventually, when you have a litter, get one of your dogs from you. Do you remember what month that was in? I'd say, well, Scrap was born October 2021. So uh, around then, maybe a couple months before when I let him know that the female was pregnant. So maybe around July, August. Okay, of 2021. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so that was well before the two of you lived together. Yes. Did you ever hear from Miss Jones? Did she ever call you before you saw her when they both came to pick up Scrappy? No, Your Honor. Okay, you can sit down now. Cute. Ms. Jones, who paid for Scrappy? Me and Joshua. Show me. I have here Zelle and Venmo payments to Joshua. The first one is in February, and then he didn't start asking me for large amounts. Hold on one second. Hold on. These don't look like anything like payments for the dog. What are those payments? $100, $500, $350 in June. What were those for? They were all payments towards Scrappy. He started asking me for $200. $350 at You mean that after time. you already had the dog? Yes. Of course, you got he, the dog. Yeah, but he didn't pay for him straight up. And his friend told us that we could pay for him at will. He didn't give him money the first day that we picked him up. Okay, I'll go back to you. How much money did Mr. Caldwell pay on the day he picked up the dog? Zero dollars. When was the first time he made a payment? Now you could stand up again. He made a payment shortly after, within the first month, of about $300. So in January, he made first payment. Of $300. And in January, there is no Zelle payment from you at all. When was the next payment, do you recall? I believe in March, he paid another $200. Well, do you have March. records of what you paid, sir? Yes. I I'd like to see them. I just want to see what you paid and when you paid it. By the way, while he's looking for that, when you lived with Mr. Caldwell, did you both contribute to the rent? My contribution to the rent was paying for the groceries, so I have all my receipts. So the answer is you did not pay rent? That was our deal. Me but the answer groceries. is you did not pay rent? No, ma'am. Did you pay any utilities? Only when he asked me for extra money to pay his phone bill or to pay for the Wi-Fi sometimes. And when you paid for these extra things, Wi-Fi or his phone bill, did you pay by cash or did you pay by... The extra charges in there that I didn't highlight. The ones that are $20, $30, those are for gas. Um, the $70 one is for his card. Well, I just want to know how you know the payment in July for $200, what it was for. I was only giving him money at that time. Uh, for Scrappy, he started asking me for large amounts of money for him. So that's when I gave him those. He didn't ask me for anything towards bills for that apartment. Is Scrappy totally paid for? No. How much is owed? $2,300. So the only amount that was paid so far was $700? Yes, Your Honor. 
This is what happens, because relationships come and go, you know, 50% of the marriages in this country fail, so why would you think a relationship is gonna last as long as a French bulldog? Jasmine Jones claims her ex-boyfriend, Joshua Caldwell, owes for the costs of a French bulldog. Joshua is countersuing for vandalism and an assault. Okay, and this is an agreement that I, Joshua Caldwell, have agreed to buy Kashmir. That was his name originally. From Frederick Wright. Once the dog's paid in full, I will receive full ownership rights. Frederick Wright will remain the rightful owner of Kashmir until I complete $3,000 in payments. Right? Correct. And both of you signed this, and this was in January of 2022. That's a reasonable... What are you laughing at? I'm not laughing. I'm just like, when did he even sign that? Because I was with him the day that we picked him up, and he never showed me any contract. Well, but this is reasonable, because he's not transferring any rights to him. He's going to remain the owner. He's the owner of the dog until the full amount is paid for the dog of $3,000. Right now, he said that the only thing was paid was $700. Go ahead, now I'll hear you. Now I got it, now you can sit down. When I was present for us picking up Scrappy and, and purchasing him, it was word of mouth contract. There was no paper signing at all. He didn't even show me a paper. And? And he showed me him, he asked me if I liked him, I said yes, and he said he would go half on him with me. Okay. And I said okay, and it was that same day. So I get off of work, he picks me up, we go see Scrappy, didn't know we were gonna get him that day. We ended up getting him that day. He tells me, okay, it's just gonna be $3,500. They walk to the back of the room and start talking and making an agreement. Come back okay, out. Okay, so just a second. So they went in the back of the room. You were not there. That's what you just told me. They went in the back to make an agreement and then they came out. That's what... He tells me it's going to be $3,500. They walk to the back of the room, make an agreement. Right, go ahead. And then he comes back and we take Scrappy home. The next day, he texts me early in the morning and tells me that Scrappy might have gotten a bee sting or something because he was limping and he doesn't know what happened. I picked him up from his job that afternoon after I got off of work. Okay, so you picked up the dog from yes. his work. Yes, picked him up and I went straight to my mom's house to get clothes because I was going back to his house. And I was examining Scrappy, no swollen paw, no bee sting. Then he said that he probably clipped his nail on the tile and I'm just like looking at his paw and I'm like, there's nothing wrong with it, but he's limping. Those were his stories. Still don't know what happened. Scrappy wasn't showing any signs of like pain. He was just limping. So I was like, we need to, we need to take him to the vet. Like he needs to get So you took out. him to the vet? Okay, yes. and? The vet ended up telling us that he had a fracture. You can't, you can't tell me what the vet told you. I'll look at the records oh. from the vet. Okay, sorry. I have the vet bills and the reports right here. Did you pay any part of these vet bills, sir? Yes. Which parts? I didn't have any record of it because I didn't, I didn't see it coming. I honestly didn't know what happened to his elbow. Um, Andrew was there as well. We were both kind of like, we don't know. So I found out after going to the vet that Frenchies have a, a, like a ligament in their elbow and this happens often. No one is suggesting that anyone abuse the dog. Okay. Oh, I'll just, That's uh, not the suggestion. My question was a simple one. Did you pay any of these vet bills? They're yes. about $1,600. Yes. I just don't How have much did you pay? Record of it what? He's lying. I didn't ask you to interrupt. You have to understand, Miss Jones, you can't have this dog. First of all, this dog doesn't belong to either one of you. This dog belongs to him until the dog is paid for. So far, all he's gotten for the dog is $700. $500 of that he paid for. But right now, <laughs> I can't award ownership of the dog. But there's a contract that until this dog is paid for, the dog belongs to Mr. Wright. First name? Frederick. Frederick. You understand? Yes, I understand. Simple. So you have a friend who has Frenchies. Then I suggest that you go with your original plan, which is to buy a dog yourself. Not now, the same. you have no proof that you paid any of these vet bills. I just have the medicine with my name on it. Well, the medicine with your name on it doesn't help. $1,600 in vet bills. And you have physical custody of the dog now, right? Right. And your agreement with Mr. Wright is that you don't get ownership of that dog 
until the dog is paid for. Yeah. I mean, I can't enforce your contract with regard to Miss Jones. The dog was not paid for. I've already offered to pay him for the remainder of whatever Josh hasn't paid him. The contract is with Mr. Caldwell, not you. So that's what happened when foolish young people decide to own a dog together and they're not married. They don't even live together. This is what happens, because the relationships come and go, you know, 50% of the marriages in this country fail, so why would you think a relationship is gonna last as long as a French bulldog? It's sort of ridiculous, and I've advised against it for the last 25 years, nobody wants to heed this, so I'm faced with a situation where, when did the two of you break up? I left on September 3rd. Well, now we're a couple of months, but... Uh, she didn't leave, she had to be uh, well, this is, is going to go into the assault charge. I don't. Uh, but listen, she had to be escorted I, I out. Okay, whatever. If, I, I don't care. You want to close. You, shh. I'll get to the counterclaim in a second. I will give it the same attention as I've given her claim for the dog. She's not getting the dog back. You have to, however, pay her the $1,600 that she paid for the vet. Do you understand? Okay. So that part of your petition is granted. Was the bill all paid? I'm still paying it off currently. We both agreed to apply for care credit together and whoever... But it's your bill that you have to pay. If you work in accounting, you have a check, you oh, don't yes. want that garnish, so you have to pay it. I am paying it. You, you have to pay it, okay. And he's going to reimburse you for that, $1,600. All right, now let's get to this counterclaim and make short shrift of it. Money owed for assault and vandalizing personal belongings. Let's start with the assault. Allegedly, the assault took place when the Plaintiff came home intoxicated. I'm a kickboxer. On September 3rd, she came to my fight and she dropped me off at home. That's a lie. If you say it again, what I'm going to do, if you interrupt Miss Jones again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dismiss your claim and you'll pay for these vet bills yourself. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead. She didn't like the people that was at my fight there and uh, so she had a couple of drinks. She got to my house and she started to fight with me, and I tried to remove myself from the fight, and then she started getting violent. So then I called her family to come pick her up, and they showed up maybe an hour later. In that hour, I tried to remove myself to another room. She went and got scissors and started to cut my shoes up. Then I had to try to grab my shoes and scrap and go into the opposite room, and she came in there and was trying to fight me. All the while, all this happening, I'm recording her on video to make sure that I'm you have up. that recording? Yes. I'd like to see it. This would be me asking her just to leave. This I, whole thing I, is I, out of retaliation. What are you about to do? Are you, why are you being, are you hitting me in the face? Record me because I want my dog. I'm fighting me. She won't stop fighting me. I've asked you to leave. Explain that to me. Jasmine Jones is accusing her ex-boyfriend, Joshua Caldwell, of owing vet bills for a French bulldog. Joshua is countersuing, claiming Jasmine assaulted him. Okay, I you have know. that recording? Yes. I'd like to see it. This would be me asking her just to leave. This whole thing is out of retaliation. Why are you being, are you hitting me in the face? Record me, because I want my dog. She's fighting me, she won't stop fighting me. I've asked you to leave. <laughs> Your stuff is in bags. You're such Josh. Okay. okay. There you go. Yeah. There you go again. On camera hitting me. On camera hitting me. On camera. You see you're hitting me? There you go. Explain that to me. I wasn't dropping him off. We were still... I don't care what you're dropping off. Explain that video to me. I was pushing the phone out of my face because he had me on live and was saying my full name. He cut off parts of it. No, I just want to know name. what happened here. This was clearly you were going after I was, him. I, I was don't know whether you... I was the phone out of his hand because he was saying my full name, saying I was crazy. I had already packed my stuff. I was leaving. We walk in the house. He calls me a dumb bee and then goes straight to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna leave. Like, I'm not gonna deal with this. I had Scrappy by my side. I was packing what I could, taking it downstairs. I walk back up, he goes, oh, you're leaving? And he snatches Scrappy and locks him in the bedroom. And then when he goes to open the door is when I barge in, I'm just like, give me my dog so I can leave. And he- Well, I wanna know what the violent stuff was about. He was recording me he was saying recording, my name. He was recording and you. saying I was crazy and I wouldn't get out of the house. and. I was like, stop recording me. And I was just hitting the phone out of his hand. I never once put my hands on him. He's already hit me and choked me in the past. So okay. I would not 
go there to provoke him to <laughs> hurt me again. Did you ever report to anyone that he hurt you? I told my mom. Uh, did you ever report? No, I didn't. No. Mr. Caldwell, yeah. were you injured? I mean, I'm a fighter. I'm not gonna... Were you injured is my question. No. Her family came? Yeah. The police were not called. You called her family instead. Did you pick her up? Stand up, please. Your mother? Yes, I am. Okay. And this incident happened on what date when he called you? It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. Right. On... Shh! Don't interrupt. On what date? Labor Day. Did you go to Mr. Caldwell's home? Yes, I did. What time did you get there? Probably almost 4. Had Mr. Caldwell ever called you before with regard to picking up your daughter or that she was... No. No. So this was a first? Yes. Now, when you got there, I want you to describe what you saw. She was crying, she was upset, and I told her, come on, let's just go. And she said, no, I want to get my dog. I can't leave my dog here. He's been violent in the past. I've seen it. I told her, don't ever leave him with him again after a beach incident where he, like, hit him. I mean, he's a kickboxer, like he said. He doesn't hit the dog like a normal person would just tap a dog. No, this was back in July. He was a puppy. He was a baby. And I was so furious when I saw that. He only did it because a dog snapped at him because he was angrily packing him up into a dog carrier. Would you do me a favor? Would you describe to me your daughter's condition? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Describe to me. You have to understand. Your daughter cannot get the dog. The dog does not belong to the defendant. Okay. The dog belongs to Mr. Wright. What happens to the $1,310 she spent for the dog? Well, she sent I, that I, money I, to him. Just, I have to tell you something. I don't see anything in your daughter's evidence that suggests to me that any payments that she made to him had anything to do with the dog. Anything to do with the dog. Mr. Wright was very clear. He said he received $700 for the dog. There were two payments that were identified in his register as payments for Scrappy. There is absolutely nothing in your daughter's register that she gave me of these odd payments of $160 or $70 say Scrappy on it, not one. So I've already made a determination of where the dog is staying. The dog is staying wherever Mr. Wright wants the dog to stay, because he owns the dog. Okay. Understand? Yes. So now, that's your daughter's case. I finished that part of the case. What I want to know is he has a counterclaim, and his counterclaim was that your daughter, while in an intoxicated state, assaulted him. Some of that I saw on this video. Some of it you saw on the video. Mr. Caldwell was honest, because it doesn't look as if he was injured as a result of that, and I'm absolutely not discounting the fact that no one should put their hands on somebody else. But an assault requires an injury. And so if this is an attempt... Is that dog sleeping? No, that's... <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny. He runs all the time. That is so funny. <laughs> so, Mr. Caldwell, can you show me what damage you allege Miss Jones caused your property? That's the next thing. You said an assault, which never happened because there was no physical injury. Would you mind telling me, please, what property specifically and photographs of that property? I have it. Okay, so your counterclaim is dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,600 for the vet bills that she paid or is obligated to pay on her credit. It's not an assault unless I get hurt? Yes, it's not an assault unless there is an injury. So if I was that drunk, an attempt her up at her house? Second, that's an attempted... Sir, it's an attempted assault. Do you understand? If an assault has a specific definition, I believe she probably attempted to assault you when she touched you in an unauthorized manner. She was punching me in she, the face. That's not a... Show me picture of any was, injury. In... Show me... No, I didn't see that in the video, sir. I saw her lunging towards you. Do you understand? I saw her lunging towards you. Right. I didn't see her hit you. I didn't see a photograph of any injury. I didn't see a police report where you reported any injury. She report incidents where her being drunk and fighting other men. Oh, okay, okay. Did you understand what I said? An assault requires injury. An attempted assault does not. And attempted assault is a crime. But it's a crime which I choose because of the circumstances here, not to consider and not to award you any cash award because you were not injured in any way. So unless you have photographs of the pair of shoes that you say she cut or something else, I'm dismissing your counterclaim. We got it? Good. Okay. 
judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,600. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. Scrappy was not just like a dog or a pet, like he was my support. I mean, it was fair. Obviously, she had nothing to do with the dog. It's expected because he lied the entire time that we were together. And that's a lie. And not to have given him any of the money that I put towards Scrappy. She literally just got all the transactions that we've ever done between each other on Venmo or Zale and brought that to court. You now I just think like he was pocketing that money the entire time. And that's why I was dismissed, because it wasn't valid at all. I disagree with you a little bit on the countersuit of the assault charge. I have a more, I guess, broad overview, since I'm just out of school, with the common law. So assault versus battery, as far as I learned, was assault was just the imminent threat of a harm. You're fearing for your life or offensive contact of some sort, whereas battery is the actual offensive touching. There has to be some sort of contact. So if we're ruling by common law, which I know we're not bound by any particular state's jurisdiction, I would have awarded him something for the assault claim. My training is in New York, mm -hmm. and in New York there is no crime of battery. My training was it's assault. And for an assault, there has to be a physical touching and injury. And an attempted assault is placing someone in fear of imminent physical injury. I think you're probably right that there are jurisdictions that are different. We didn't actually see any contact between her and him. And he was honest. We saw, he said, yeah. you know, obviously, I didn't have any injuries, but. Right. Just as he didn't have any evidence. Former employer, Chad Young for unpaid wages and filing a false restraining order. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2140, DeTorres versus Young. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. DeTorres, according to your complaint, you did some work for the defendant as a plumber. Didn't work out, and he terminated you, and he owes you some wages. Yes, ma'am. The defendant says that while your work in the beginning was okay, you were never an employee of his, you're an independent contractor. That's the way he sets it up, and he's gonna explain that to me, that he paid you your wages even though the last job that you did cost him an awful lot to repair. He was not happy with the quality of work that you did, and his counterclaim is for vandalism, something that happened with his truck, work hours, lost duty or incompetence, that I'm not gonna hear, sir. You know, you make a choice with an employee, and if it turns out to be something that is less than satisfactory, then you let them go. But the one who I assume suffered from what you call lack of quality work that he performed was the person that you were working for. Was that a private residence that he was doing work in? Yes. Yeah, okay. a bunch well, of that's, private residents. Yeah, that's the person who suffered. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we're gonna make this as easy as possible. From what days to what days did you work? I worked for Chad from um, June 13th to August 3rd. And how much were you supposed to be paid? Uh, for those three days, $840. And that's for three days work? Yes, ma'am. Did you say June 13th? Yes, ma'am. To August 3rd? Correct. Well, that's more than three days. No, no, his wage he owes me from August 1st to August 3rd is what he did not pay me for. Okay, and where did you work during those days? Uh, multiple residents. Okay, do you have any sort of a call log from him? I do, it's right okay. here in my do short. Do you dispute that he worked from August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd? Yes. You dispute that there, he... There was one day he actually did one of my jobs for a couple hours that day. Doesn't matter. He has a log. Half a day for one day. Did you pay him for that half day? I did not because the job was done incorrectly multiple times. But he did that job. Okay, now, do you have a log? Of, uh, as in... It's some sort of a work log. You have a business. You have people who are general contractors. You get a call. You don't have a payroll because you pay these people independently. Do you pay them in cash or check? Both. Well, Both, how did you pay all... him? Uh, sometimes it was through a cashier's check and sometimes it was cash. Okay, but never through a company check where you deducted Social Security. No, because I 1099 all my employees, so they're all self-employed, so they have to do all that on their own. I do understand. I mean, you're not the inventor of this whole system, yeah. sir, yeah. of paying in cash, okay? Are you one of those independent contractors? Yes, ma'am. Stand up. How long have you been an independent contractor? I've him? been... Contracted with Chad since July 5th. Of what year? Uh, this year, 2022. Oh, so short term. Yes, ma'am. Does he pay you in check or cash? 
Uh, no, look at me. Check it first, and then uh, later on it became through Venmo, and then it was it's gone back to check now. What kind of check? Uh, cashier's check. Just a straight cashier's check with nothing taken out. No, ma'am. No, I go I go to my bank to get all that. And what? Everything. I go to my bank to get the cashier's checks, and sometimes I Venmo him the payment too, just to. Pay. I understand, but this, sir, you're not the first person who I know who pays their people in cash yeah. and says that you're independent contractors. You're independent contractors. I don't want to know about it. What name do you use for the cashier's checks? My personal name. Is this the first time you've worked for him? Yes. Okay, let me see what you have for August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Where did you work? Um, there were multiple residents, Well, you have to tell me so that he can answer. He says that they you worked all... half a day that he didn't pay you for. Yes, ma'am. So let's say that's a full day. So that's two hundred dollars. Okay. See, he would email it on his work phone, and I'd follow the addresses there. I well, then you would, would have write it on your my phone. My short notes. Just on a this. second. Then you it, would have. Then you would have it on your phone. It was his company phone. He took it back when he came to my house unannounced and told me that I was fired. Redeemed his truck. I uh, got my tools out of his vehicle. Okay. Just a sec. Do you have your phone? I do. Not the, not the, per, I have my personal one that I talk. What about the phone that you took from him? No, that one's actually broke. So it's, it's been with mm, him over okay. for the past week. Let me see the notes that you have that you took. Yes, ma'am. Fascinating. It's my shorthand, ma'am. How do I know what dates these are for? It was all on his phone, ma'am. Well, that's not him to have to prove, sir. I wasn't able to prove anything when he took his phone back. I just had my, sh that's the notes when I was employed for him as I wrote down. It's not helpful to me. Yes, ma'am. So far, the only thing that he's acknowledged is that he owes you a day's wages. Yes, ma'am. Which is $210. The other part of your complaint is a false restraining order against you. Yes, ma'am. Did you file a restraining order against I did. him? Do you have a copy of what you wrote in your restraining order? I do. I'd like to see it. So what got me that restraining order is he called and made threats and made Was threats. this after you fired him? It was. Okay, so after you fired him, he called you. Made threats. Well, what did he say when he called you? Just basically talking about, I'm gonna come to your house and everything. He wanted money. I guess, yeah. He said, you didn't pay me. Yeah. Okay. You say you got a text message and voicemail from Jeremy threatening to come to my place of residence. Yes. Can I hear it? Yeah. Do you want me to play it or do you want to look at it? I want to look at it. Okay. So, Mr. Torres, did you, after he fired you and took, came to your residence, took your house, did you call him threatening to come to his house? I did. There you did? One. With the police. It says it on these text messages, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to take his phone and those text messages. It's, there's more text. That's just the one where he said he would show me, send me my money. That's the voicemail if you want me to play it for you. Sometimes the transcription doesn't work. Yeah. You want me to play it? Just. Hey, bro. Uh, I definitely worked more than nine hours for the last week that I worked for you. Uh, I'll be contacting my... Play with me. I'll show up at your house. Yeah, that's a threat. With the police. Just a second. That's a threat. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I've had more. That's a threat. I Just had a more incidents before that as well. May I say something, ma'am? He accused me of going into his gated community, slashing tires on his work vehicle. I stated that I was going to come to his house after, if you read my text, I said to him, hey, bro, I think I misunderstood your text message. Uh, if I did, my bad. If not, I'll show up at your house with the police. I never went to his house. I waited to see if he'd be the big man and just send me my money like he said he would. It, and, I listened to the message, sir. Yes, ma'am. The message sounded threatening. Did you read the rest of them? I don't care. That message sounded threatening. Where does it say here that his tires were slashed? I, in my mind, somebody writing that against me, flattened tires, what else would it be? But you have to understand that that's not what this says. And later today. I was financially struggling. Well, you weren't living together at the time. No, she would periodically she come yeah, over. And yeah, but you weren't there. living together at the time. So how would she find out that you were in financial trouble?
Jeremy D. Torres claims his former employer, Chad Young, owes for unpaid wages and filing a false restraining order. Okay, that message alone, if he felt threatened because you were gonna come to his house and you not only said you were gonna come to his house, but you used an expletive before you and did that, did. which sounded which sounded threatening. This may be more benign, but that that phone message was sufficient for him to file for a protective order against you. Okay, why didn't he show up at the protective custody order? I don't answer your questions. No, you don't necessarily. Absolutely. Some people don't pursue it because once it's done, it's done. It wasn't done. And w once it's this done, did you This is the dismissal right here. At Dismissal for the No, I did, didn't show up. I understand he didn't show up, sir. Yes, ma'am. But I'm saying to you, I listened to your text yes, message and he had an absolute right to Can see. you see where he threatened me as well with all these back and forth texts and calling each other? Because it's in the text You're messages. You're suing him for money owed for wages and filing a false restraining order. Okay. You've proven that you worked an additional day for which he didn't pay you, which is $210. He has a counterclaim. Yes. He says that you vandalized the tires on his car. The rest of it, I'm not dealing with, sir. You picked this employee. You don't then sue the employee if you don't like the job that they do. You fire him and you get somebody else to do the job. But you can't sue him because did, did the... Person who you did the job for sue you? No, because I've got a really good Be reputation with because my customers. That, because you fixed it. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't done right. Yeah. Okay. Even up to that, like, that last day I said he worked for me, that job I had to go back to two weeks ago that they couldn't mm -hmm. close on the well, house. And next time you won't hire him. Yeah. Maybe other people won't either. But I want you to tell me about the tires. I want you to tell me what proof do you have that he had anything to do with your tires? When were the tires slashed, flattened? So the police report was uh, done Friday when he made the threats. Friday, what yep, on, date? Um, I got the date right here. I think it was. August 5th. Yeah, so August 5th is when he did it. Um, August 5th is when? The police report was made for the threats. For the threat, for the voicemail? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so um, it was the end of the day, Friday, so courts closed for the weekend. August 5th. Yep, and then Monday, the 8th, I went outside to go to work. My tires were um, slashed in the end. At that point, I realized it was just over and done and I need to go down and get a restraining order so he, people can't come onto my, you know, my property. Because area. you believed it was the plaintiff who yes. was responsible. You believed you didn't have proof at the time. Yes. You didn't have proof. Again, I, and even in my injunction, I knew all I needed was this police report to get the injunction, so I just put in my police report. You're not talking about an flat. injunction. You're talking about a restraining order. Yeah, the restraining order. Yeah, okay. So, it was I went to file the restraining... so in my restraining order, mm -hmm. I put just my tires were flat. I did not put my tires were slashed at any point because I just did, because I knew the police report was enough to get the restraining order. Okay, so your tires were flat. I didn't go into detail about my okay. tires. Okay, so in the police report, you have that your tires were flattened. No, that wasn't on the police report because that didn't happen yet. The tire incident did not happen. Okay. That happened Friday, Monday morning. I went um, out in my vehicle to go to work. That's when I found them flat and slashed. Did you file another police report? That's when I went and filed the restraining order that day. And okay, and in the application for restraining order, you said? That my tires were flat, and that was it. Yes, okay. I didn't, he, I didn't mention that they were slashed. Correct. So I don't know how he would Got know it. my tires were slashed if I didn't mention it on my restraining order. I don't know. That's an interesting question. Mr. DeTorres, Mr. DeTorres, stop, yes, stop, stop your already. paper fluttering. Okay. What made you think that the defendant's tires were slashed rather than just the air let out of them? Because I read this police report and it has a mark right here saying, or the, the uh, file Show me. that he did. Show me, and make a right circle. Here, damaged property is what I read. He checked, he checked that I damaged his property because yeah. this is written against just, me. Just, just. Mr. Tatoris, do you understand my question, sir? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm nervous in the Just flight. a second. This no has sleep. nothing to do with nerves, You're Mr. Right. Tatoris. Well, I had no sleep last night. If that has nothing to do with sleep. As far as not being... Just a second. Yes, ma'am. What I'm asking you, Mr. Tatoris, is where does it say here that his tires were slashed? I, in my mind, somebody writing that against me, flattened tires, what else would it be? He lives in a gated community. Well, that could Where's be... Where's the surveillance what could, showing me that, I, that my leg injury, the way I walk, is very distinctive? 
okay? If he's got a proof that I slashed or flattened his tires, I said slashed. It's the same thing as flattened in my mind. That's the way I think. The way I read that, that's just how it, it came out but of you my have to, But you have to understand that that's not what this says. Okay, it says that I damaged it, that his he property. He said damaged his property and you said slashed tires. Okay. Okay? Yes, ma'am. How much were the tires? 450. Let me see the receipt. I do not have a receipt because I pay cash for my tires. Well, that's too bad. You better stop paying cash, sir. You can pay cash for tires. Yeah. But when you buy tires with cash and you want to sue for them, you get a receipt. Yeah. From the people. And if you know you're coming to court, we're not talking about things that happened two years ago. Yeah. You were coming to court today. I went back to the tire shop and he's like, we just, you know, we always do cash for all your vehicles. And well, what do we cash for all your vehicles? That means you get a receipt. All right, your counterclaim's dismissed because you have no proof of anything. On the complaint, sir, I'm awarding you $210, which is one day's pay. Thank you very much. This case is over. This court is adjourned. The work just wasn't up to the quality that he promised he was going to offer. It is what it is. That's just his nature. That's always been his nature. The judgment is what the judgment is. She felt like I was only awarded a day's pay, and that's what she gave me. Keep doing what I do. That's all I can do every day. Well, Sarah Rose, that is the perfect example of you're supposed to have proof when you come to court. Yep. Standard of proof exists for a reason. It, you know, I know that when I go someplace, and sometimes I pay cash. Mm -hmm. So even if you pay cash mm -hmm. for something There's some or Venmo, record, Venmo you're supposed to get a receipt mm -hmm. in the event that you want to use whatever you bought and use that fact that you purchased something yeah. in a subsequent lawsuit. Yeah. It's the same thing as sending a gift. If you send somebody a gift, you keep the receipt yep. until you know that <laughs> they got the gift. Yeah. And you take it and you throw it away. It's just, it's just an good organi bookkeeping. It's, it's good record keeping. I and think. he's a business guy. Yeah. He's a business guy. Didn't, didn't make sense to me, but clearly plaintiff for somebody who has a little trouble. Yeah. Case 2137, Wise versus Light. All parties, please step forward. Caitlin Weiss is suing her ex-boyfriend, Cody Light, for unpaid loans. Ms. Weiss, the defendant was a boyfriend of yours for a period of time. Correct. And you allege a couple of loans, one from a year and a half ago, the balance of a $200 loan, he paid you back $100. Yes. Quite frankly, I'm not interested in what happened a year and a half ago. What you say is, I need time to catch up. It was a verbal conversation. Well, what's in writing is you saying to her, I can make payments to you. But the thing that you don't have in writing is where she gave the loan. Is that right? Caitlin Weiss claims her ex-boyfriend, Cody Light, is refusing to pay back loans she gave him during their relationship. Okay, in March of this year, you alleged that you gave him money. He was still your boyfriend in March of this year, is that right? Yes. Is that correct? That is correct. And in March of this year, he had gotten a car. What kind of car did you get? It was a Buick Regal. What year? A 2004, I believe. Where did you get it from? I got it from a private seller. How much did you pay for it? $850. Needed fixing? Yes. And you didn't have money for parts? I did for the first round of parts. But you didn't for the second? After the first ones failed, I did not. And how much did you need for parts? That I don't remember. Who bought them? Uh, Miss Weiss did. Did she buy them on a credit card? Uh, I believe so, yes. And you have no idea what she paid for those parts? I don't remember. But that would be in March of 2022? It would have been in April. Did you pay for the parts by credit card? Yes, I paid between Cash App transactions that were transferred to Mr. Leip through Cash App, which I have present here. I'd like to see proof of them. What do they total? They total up to $920. Does that sound about right, Mr. Lippi? That, that's about right. Okay. And tell me about the discussion that you had with her when she paid for these parts. Um, there was a discussion of how, how I was going to pay her back. And um, what did you tell her? I, I did agree at that time. And then what happened? Um, there were then later discussions as we were still in a relationship and I was in financial troubles that um, she told me not to worry about it. This 920 was a loan in April of 2022. That's what you say. It was in April, not March. Correct. And then you say at some point she forgave that loan. Right. Tell me when that happened. Um, shortly after the car got back together. 
um, which would have been in May. Um, I was financially struggling. Well, did you you weren't living together at the time? No, she would periodically she brought, come yeah, over. And yeah, but you weren't there. living together at the time. So how would she find out that you were in financial trouble? Uh, I mean, we were at that state in our relationship where she knew basically my financials all the time. When did the two of you break up? I believe that was in June. So shortly after you say she forgave the loan. That is correct. Did you ever forgive this $920 loan? No, I did not. Brennan Black was there the day that I had confronted Cody at a car meet and had offered him a short little payment of $790 where Cody said he would do it in payments. Uh, just a minute. You broke up in June. Correct. He says that you had a conversation before that sometime in May where you knew he was in financial difficulty. Did you ever have that conversation with him? No, that is incorrect. I do have statements here to prove it as well. I'd like to see them. So then you said he owed you $970. He had been giving you some money? Yes, he had been giving me it a says, little. It says, so that puts you at 670 OK? That's what you wrote. Correct. He had been giving me money periodically throughout the beginning of the car parts. OK, but it says, so that puts you at 670 OK? Yes, there's more transactions on the cash apps as well. Oh, after that? Yes, correct. Sorry. No, sir, what you say is I need time to catch up. There's no forgiving here, unless you have some. It was, it was a verbal conversation. Well, what's, it, what's, in, ri what's in writing? Right. What's in writing is you saying to her, I need some time to catch up. I can make payments to you. All of that is in writing. But the thing that you don't have in writing is where she gave the loan. Is that right? Yeah. $920. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're done here. Thank you. This court is adjourned. It is what it is. I think it was fair. Mr. Lake did owe me money, and he got what he deserved. Yes, she lent me the money, but at the same time, she was helping me out in a relationship, and she knew I was struggling. He said he was going to pay me back and never followed through even after that. There were discussions about her telling me not to worry about it. Not to trust so much. I'm never going to do it again. Oh, that's going to be um, a contract. <laughs> She was very prepared. Oh, she was like to the she, point, knew exactly she, what she needed. And she had all of her evidence. Yep. All. Just the way all, we like it. All lined up. It's unfortunate when a loan becomes a gift and a gift then becomes a loan when the romance is over. These writings are always so helpful and these text messages yep. really are making my life much easier. And one thing that I mention a lot is with Cash App or Venmo, Always state, if you're paying someone money, don't just send the money, put in the subject line. They have a subject line on those for a reason, for this car part, for this tow, for this X, Y, Z, the other. So I always, when using Venmo or Cash App or something like that in an online transfer system, I'll send the money and then in the transaction, you can, you can put whatever you want in the memo line of, of Venmo. So housekeeping for me, I'll, I'll pay through that through or that. other other things I just I list housekeeping for and I put the date and the hours so I at least have a record of who I'm paying food, electronically. If you buy food, exactly. if you or if I give someone if, money for dinner for half my meal, I say for my dinner on X Y Z date. And then you can get it keeps a printout. It organized. Exactly. And then you can like a bank account. Yep. Interesting. Yes. I didn't know that. It just keeps it organized.